Hello, my name is Turtle Army Jess, and welcome back to another Synfig Studio animation tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about how to take an animation in Synfig and make a YouTube video out of it using a free program called OpenShot Video Editor. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume you have finished working on a project, and the last thing you need to do is get your finished project out of Synfig and onto YouTube. In Synfig, the first thing to do is check your canvas size. YouTube's aspect ratio is 16 to 9, so you don't have to use this ratio, but there will be some cropping on your video if you don't. So, under the canvas properties, I like to use settings of 1280 by 720. The next thing you want to do is take a note of your frames per second. I prefer 24 frames per second, but it doesn't matter what frame rate you use as long as OpenShot has a setting for it. It's very important that both programs are using the same frame rate. The last thing I'm going to do is make sure that my animation is a whole number of seconds long. For example, if I'm animating at 24 frames per second and I have 48 frames of animation, that's exactly 2 seconds of animation. But if I have 60 frames of animation, that's 2.5 seconds of animation. The file will not import correctly into OpenShot if you do not have a whole number of seconds. So if my animation is 60 frames long, I would want to make my animation slightly longer. I'd round up to the nearest second, so 3 seconds, or 72 frames. It doesn't matter what the added frames look like, I'm going to delete them later in OpenShot. I'm going to make my last few frames bright pink just to make this easier to demonstrate. Now that I've checked my aspect ratio, my frames per second, and the length of my animation, I'm going to go to File, Render, and choose a location to render to. I usually create a new file for each project. Then I make the end of my file, .png, and select Render. After clicking Render, don't touch your Synfig project until you see the words File Rendered Successfully. While Synfig is rendering, it creates a separate image file for each frame of your animation. I can go to my folder and see all these files here and kind of scroll through them. Each file's name has the frame number included. After the rendering is complete, I'll close Synfig and launch the OpenShot video editor. I'm going to use OpenShot to put all of the PNGs together. Select Preferences, under Preview, select the quality. I usually use HD 1080p 24 frames per second, or HD 720p 24 frames per second, because I always animate in 24 frames per second. Make sure whichever you choose matches your frame rate. Make sure you save often, that option is up here under File, Save. To import, I'll click the plus button and select only the first PNG. That's the one with the 0000 at the end of its name. You should get a pop-up that asks, would you like to import your file name as an image sequence? Select Yes. Then find your imported animation, right-click on it, and select Properties. Change the frame rate to match yours. For me, that's 24 frames a second. Be careful not to forget this step, because OpenShot likes to default to 30 frames per second. Then, click and drag your animation down onto one of these tracks. As I move my cursor around the timeline, I can see my animation in the preview window on the upper right. Now, here's why you should always keep your animations at a whole number of seconds. I've rendered my animation file twice to show you the comparison. One is 60 frames of animation, so the bad 2.5 seconds. The little minute hand of the clock rotates, and when it's done, the final frame is pink. In my second file, the good one, I have a whole number of exactly 3 seconds, or 72 frames of animation. It's the same clock animation as before. You can see the clock's movement ends at 60 frames, just like the first file. However, in this file, the 12 leftover ending frames are pink. So, for the 2.5 second bad example, if you watch the little preview window in the top right, the clock hand doesn't fully rotate all the way around, and the pink background never appears. This is because OpenShot cut off the file, it's only showing the first two seconds. This animation is missing frames. If I look at the preview of my other file, the whole three seconds are there. The clock goes all the way around and ends with the pink background. So this is why you always create your synfig files with a whole number of seconds. After you import your file with that whole number of seconds, you can trim it down to be however long you want. All I have to do is select my clip so there's a red border around it, move my cursor until the very end of my clip, right before everything turns pink. Right-click, slice, 
then keep left side and it will delete the pink. Now I have my 2.5 second animation and all of the frames are there. Here's an important tip. Be careful. When you import, you tell OpenShot where to find your files. If you later move those files from their original location, OpenShot will have an error. The program won't know where to find your files. You don't want to lose your progress, so make sure you don't move your files after you import them. So once you put your animation into OpenShot, you can edit your video a bit. Maybe you want to add music, or a title screen, or some transitions, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of neat features in OpenShot. I'm not going to go into any further detail about the program because I'm trying to keep this video short, but there are plenty of resources online about how to use it. OpenShot isn't the best editor, but it is free, and for that price it's pretty great. Anyways, after you finish editing your video, go to File, Export Project, Export Video. Make sure that you select a folder path so you know where your finished file will end up. Then, under the Video Profile, select the quality you want. Once again, make sure that the frame rate matches what you've been using. Select Export Video and wait for the green bar on the bottom to fill up. Now, your video is ready to be posted to YouTube. I really hope this tutorial helped you out. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.